Hello there, my name is Ben Doyle and it is my great privilege to be the head teacher of St Peter's Catholic School in Bournemouth. This is a talk for parents who are considering sending their child to us in Year 7 starting in September 2022. St Peter's has been serving the community for 85 years now. The picture on your screen you can see is the very first cohort of students to pass through our gates. Back then there were only 66 boys at the school. We've grown a great deal over the past 85 years and this was us celebrating our 80th anniversary together. In the picture there is the entire community, that's 2,000 staff and students gathered together on our beautiful school playing field. Although we're a much larger community than we were back then, one thing is very much the same. It's our ethos, and our ethos is central to all that we do. And no matter what your faith, no matter what your background, I think it's very important that we all ascribe to the golden rule as laid out in St Matthew's Gospel. And the golden rule goes as follows. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. But this sums up the law and the prophets. So as I say, the golden rule is what we all aspire to live to here at St Peter's in our daily lives. We are um, part of the Catholic Diocese of Portsmouth and also the De La Salle Brothers. We are for students aged 11 to 18 of all abilities and we are for boys and girls. Now one of the questions parents often ask me on the open evening is whether their child will get into the school or not. So what I've produced here is a very simple oversubscription criteria. So the order in which um, spaces are allocated to children at St Peter's in the event of oversubscription is as follows. First of all, looked after Catholic children, then it's baptised Catholics, then it's other looked after children, followed by children of permanent staff, followed by Christians, that's other than Catholics, and then children of other faiths, and then finally, all other children not in any of the above categories. We are very oversubscribed as a school, but last year I can say that we got down to category seven. Now there's no guarantee it'll be that, that way this year, but all we can do is talk about the previous year. So category seven, we admitted students to last academic year. Now our admissions officer is Mrs Botto and she's uh, available via the school email system but there were two points that she wanted me to bring to your attention. The first is if you need to submit a supplementary information form or a SIF, those are to be sent to the school with all the supporting evidence. So you apply to the local authority for the place at the school but if you need to submit a supplementary information form that comes directly to the school. I'd also like to remind you that the last week of October is half term and the deadline for admissions is the 31st of October so please bear in mind if you need to submit documentation I'd recommend you do it before half term because access to the school will be limited at this time. Um, this is only a very brief summary of our admissions. Uh, please read the policy for full detail and the policy is of course available on our website. So perhaps now it's worth talking a little about our philosophy of education. I think Pope Francis sums education up very, very well with this quote. Education cannot be neutral. It is either positive or negative. Either it enriches or it impoverishes. Either it enables a person to grow or it lessens, even corrupts him. The mission of schools is to develop a sense of truth, of what is good and beautiful. So some of the key words there that we really strive for all our students to have an experience here that is positive, that enriches them, that enables them to grow and helps them to develop that sense of truth of what is good and of what is beautiful. Education is far more than just exam results for us, although our exam results are very important and we do superbly well in examinations at all key stages. For us, there's a far bigger picture there, so we need to develop the whole person. St John Baptist de La Salle was the founder of the de La Salle order of which our school is a part of and he was around many many years ago in 1651 to 1719 and he was destined for a life of great privilege in France but he had a conversionary experience when he was quite a young man and he saw these poor destitute children in, on the streets of his hometown of Reims and he knew he had to do something for them so he gave up his wealth, he gave up his family home and he set about looking after these young people and giving them education because he saw education for them as a way for freedom, a way to give them opportunities in life they would not otherwise have had because of course back then education was only for the rich and the wealthy. So he set about giving these young people a really good start in life and an opportunity to become more than perhaps what society deemed they would become. And although he was around a very long time ago, a number of his sayings still stay with us to this very day. I think the one which is most important for us today is the one as follows. To touch the hearts of your students is the greatest miracle you can perform. So very much like the quotes on the previous screen, this is all about us educating the hearts and minds of our young people. It's about the formation of the whole person, not just one narrow side of them. And this is very much what we aim to do even to this very day. 
We've recently, in education, been given a new education minister, which is Nadim Zahawi, and he spoke the other day for the first time um, in his new role. And in many ways, there's, there's a lot to, to like about what he said. He said, I want all children, young people and adults, to have access to a brilliant education, the right qualifications and opportunities to secure good jobs. That's both vital for them and also for our economy and is more important now than ever. And absolutely, we do want our students to be able to secure good jobs and we do want them to be able to contribute to the economy. But again, I think that can be a very narrow way of looking at education if this is all that it's about. So absolutely, we want them to get good jobs. We want our young people to contribute to the economy, to take their place in society. But there's so much more than this. We want our young people to develop that whole person, formation of the whole person, which I was previously talking about. So whilst it's very important we pay very much due attention to what the Department for Education and Ofsted say, we mustn't lose as a school what is core and central to our beliefs and what is we want to do to develop our young people. Now, canon law is pretty much like as the rule book for the Catholic Church, and it very much talks about the purpose of Catholic schools. And I think this is far more powerful than what we've seen on the last page. It talks about young people developing their physical, moral and intellectual talents in harmony in order that they may attain a greater sense of responsibility and a right use of freedom. So again, this is absolutely the same theme I've been talking about in the previous few slides. We absolutely wanted to develop those intellectual talents of our young people, but there's so much more than that as well. It's about the formation of the whole person. So if you choose to send your child to us for their education, it's very much about educating that whole person, not just a very narrow part of, of perhaps what people view education should be in today's world. So in order to develop the whole person, we need a, a wide and varied curriculum. We really do our very, very best to give our students a wonderful experience of all the subjects. We don't think that education should be limited just to the classroom in terms of book-based subjects. We really do have a wonderful creative arts and a technology and all sorts of other areas of the school as well. So there's the pictures here show you just some of the opportunities your child will have if they come to us, some of the really interesting learning they will be doing in the classroom. But learning also takes place beyond the classroom. We're very lucky to have a, a superb performing arts team here at St Peter's and every year we put on a wonderful production which is of such high quality. This here was the last one we did two years ago. It was the Sweeney Todd uh, was the production we put on. This year we're putting on Footloose. It takes place early February so I'd recommend um, you get your tickets and come along because it is such a wonderful opportunity for our students to develop those talents and to showcase those talents that perhaps they might not get to do so at other places. They are uh, you know, wonderfully talented students but the reason they're wonderfully talented is because of the amazing staff and families who work with them to enable them to become the very best they can be. We're also very cognizant that especially during lockdown the need for pastoral and spiritual care has grown in schools across the country and we've always had a, a very very strong offer in terms of the pastoral support we give. Um, every child in year seven will be worked with Miss Johnson who's our year leader for year seven. She also looks after all the transition activities as well. She's very very experienced and has a wonderful way of enabling our students to transition from primary to secondary in the best possible way. We've also got lots of other members of staff who support her and all of the children in Year 7 in terms of making that transition very successfully. As faith schools, chaplaincy um, also plays a key role. So the pictures here are of our chapel and in the bottom right picture on the screen you can see Liz Cooper who is one of our chaplains working with one of our young people. So every so often young people may struggle at times at school and they need a bit of time out where they can just come and talk to a, a trusted adult where they can talk through perhaps some of the things they're experiencing and perhaps try and work through ways of making things better. So we're very proud of our pastoral provision and our spiritual provision at St Peter's. We really do think there's something that makes us stand out from other schools. We also try to give opportunities outside of the classroom as well. There's just a few pictures coming up on your screen now. Um, certainly lots of students are involved in the Duke of Edinburgh scheme, which is an absolutely wonderful way for students to develop some of those other skills, perhaps away from the classroom that they may not get to do so otherwise. We also offer opportunities to go on trips, um, both domestically. We've got a trip going out to um, Cornwall over the next couple of weeks uh, with our art students, uh, but we also do some international trips as well. And we're hoping we can restart these again as we are hopefully coming out of the Covid pandemic. On the bottom of the screen there there's a group of our year 11s, 12s and 13s who went out to Kenya with Camps International and did some amazing work with a rural community out there. Um, above that you can see the South African flag flying and that's because we've got a very strong link with the school in South Africa where members of our school have been out to visit them, we've taken students out there previously as well, we've had staff from the school in South Africa coming to visit us and um, we send out uniform and other supplies to them to help them with their education as best we can and we also 
with today's you know, modern technology, we're able to link up with them very well. So the last couple of years, we've done some really good poetry competitions where we, we link up with the school over Zoom and over Teams. And it's been a, a really good experience in helping us feel that much closer to that school that we work with. On the right hand side of the screen at the bottom there is brother Lionel who was our head of arts back in the 1960s. Um, he moved out to India to the Tamil Nadu region of India where he did all sorts of incredible work um, for charity in terms of building up a school and building up a, a villages for young people who really are quite destitute in many ways and it's incredible the work that he's done out there. He sadly passed away a couple of years ago but it's still very much a charity which we are really really invested in sponsoring so we, we raise lots of money for them where we can and um, the picture at the top of the screen there is actually the school that was built with the funds that we'd helped to contribute and it's actually named St Peter's which we think is just a wonderful connection we've got there so certainly all sorts of opportunities for us to share our talents and also to to develop that sense of what it is to be to be a faith school. There are two years, um, or two days of the year rather, each year, which I really, really enjoy, perhaps more than any other. Uh, the first is our Be More Clare Day, which is when the entire community, which is from reception all the way up to year 13, do a sponsored walk all the way to Hengisbury Head and back. It's a wonderful day where we can raise money for charities. It's called Be More Clare Day because it's in honour or memory of a member of staff who sadly passed away from cancer a few years ago. And we wanted to, to mark and celebrate her life because she was so involved in the community and was a, a passionate um, collector of, of funds and did all sorts of charity work for us at school as well. And alongside the fundraising and the fun activities we do, we also do a lot of education on that day where we're really looking to, to help educate our children, perhaps maybe it's about cancer one year, maybe about something else the next year, but absolutely key that people really get, have a, a, a holistic experience on that day. It's a wonderful day, as I say, the whole community comes together and it's a, it's a great day to experience. The other day is the feast day of St Peter and St Paul, which is our feast day as a school, being St Peter's. And again, the whole community come together here from reception all the way up to year 13 and all the staff join in as well. And we gather together and celebrate mass on the playground, which is, as I said, a, a wonderful experience for all. Very, very enjoyable. Uh, this picture here we see on the screen now is uh, a young lady called Lucy who goes to school in Scotland and this is her, on her first day of P2 which I think is the equivalent of our year one in England and her mum said she absolutely loved school and she loved having her new things on. The reason I'm showing you this picture is because this is the same girl, believe it or not, at the end of the day. And when her mum asked her what happened, the reply from her was nothing much. And I think there's, there's a, a big message here in this story is that you send your children to us at school in the morning, you pick them up in the afternoon, and as they become a bit older, perhaps they tell you a little bit less about what it is they've been up to at school. And it's really important that you understand what it is we do at school and what we're doing to make a difference for your children. And there's a question really, which is what is a good school? How do we know what a good school is? Well, we devote a lot of time to research here at St Peter's and we look into what can make a real difference in school. Because it's really important we understand this. We don't just go upon what we, what we think makes a good school, what we feel makes a good school, what we know works for us. We need to look at this wide body of research to help us really give your child the very best experience they can have while they're at St Peter's. And what it tells us, all this research, is that lots of things do not make a difference. And you may be surprised by some of these. So, for example, class size, um, whether we set students have a mixed ability, the type of school, whether they go to a grammar school, an academy or a free school, the types of curriculum, the length of the school day, the buildings, all these things do not make a difference um, to how your child will perform at school. There is one thing which does make a difference, and that is the teacher. So when we talk about what makes a good school, really we're saying what makes a school full of good teachers or great teachers. So we've got to focus on what it is that makes our teachers superb. So we invest lots of time and training into making our teachers the best. And the reason is because of this. And this statistic I find is, is quite um, awe-inspiring when you look at the difference teachers can make. With the best teaching, a student will learn in six months what it takes an average teacher a whole year to teach. But with poor teaching, if we look at this the other way, the same learning will take over two years. So if we've got a very good teacher alongside a very poor teacher, your child will make a fourfold difference in progress, depending on which one they're with. So it's absolutely vital that we make all our teachers the very best they can be. And we're delighted with the quality of teaching in school. Um, every time we, go, we observe lessons and we look at what's going on around the school, we see absolutely brilliant practice. And it's so important we continue to develop that and devote lots of time to training to make our teachers even better because it really is quite straightforward. If we can make our adults better teachers, we will make our students better learners. So by making the adults better teachers, we make the students better learners. And one of the things which is absolutely key for us is that the students are actively engaged in their lessons. There's a quote here from Benjamin Franklin, which really sums this up very well. 
Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I may remember. Involve me and I learn. So if you want your child to come to us at St Peter's, it's very important you understand they're going to be active learners in the lessons. It's not something that's done to them, it's something that's done with them. You know, we don't want passivity. As I said, we want our students to be actively engaged in their learning at all times. Now, the other question parents asked me, I said at the start of this talk, there were two things. The first is, will my child get into St Peter's? And the second tends to be, what are your exam results like? You know, will my student do well if they come to your school in terms of their GCSEs and their A-levels? This is, I think, the last time we could actually run formal examinations at St Peter's a couple of years ago, because obviously with the pandemic, we haven't been able to do exams as normal. We have, however, still had our results days because we've been assessing our students in different ways. And results days are always a fascinating day Teenagers often like to hide their emotions, not to show you exactly how they're feeling at all times. But on results day, the emotions there are so raw that you, they can't hide how they are feeling. And I'm so happy that this year, as with every other year, the vast majority of our students are delighted because they have worked exceptionally well. They work really, really hard. And because they work hard, they do very well and they get those rewards. Yeah, they're supported by great teaching and they're supported by great students in their lessons. And as I said, it's just a wonderful day to see how well they will do. In terms of how our results are, I mean, you can look back at the performance table. So certainly you can look on the government website and you can also look on the Ofsted website to see what they say about how our school is doing. But I think it's really important not just to look at one year, to look at the whole series of years, because, you know, one year could be a blip in performance. It could be a great performance. You know, if you look over time, you see what the trends are, because I would think as parents, you're probably less interested in what the results were like last year. You're more interested in what the results are going to be in five, six, seven years time when your child is sitting their GCSEs and A-levels with us. So I'd say look back at our history of results, we're very proud of them, we're very happy with how our students do and I can say that every student who engages with us, who works with us and does their very best will always perform well in their examinations. That also always happens at St Peter's, we see our students making great progress from Key Stage 2 to Key Stage 4 and also from Key Stage 4 to Key Stage 5. Finally, I'd just like to leave you with this quote here, this is above the main entrance of our school, it says, come in with love, stay long, then bid farewell in peace. And I sincerely hope that your child will come to us. They will come in with love, they will stay long, and they will then bid farewell in peace, as so many of our students have done over the years. The final thing I would like to say is that if you're still wondering why you should choose us as a school, there's lots of things I've already talked about in the talk already today, but please just consider we've got a broad, balanced and enriching curriculum, we've got a resolute focus on teaching and learning, and we've got very clear and consistent behaviour systems to ensure that the learning can happen as best as it possibly can in classroom. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Um, I would just like to say we look forward to receiving your application in due course. Thank you and goodbye.